Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another Backman tank engine review. So yeah, it seems to me that it's been quite a while since I've done a Backman tank engine, so I thought why not do that today. So I'm going to be unboxing the 56XX today, it's this uh, lovely 062 tank engine in fact. And looking at the box you'd think that this is uh, quite an old version, but actually the original model, the original tooling, dates back many many years to the mainline era. And in fact, even though this isn't in the most modern Backman packaging, this is a pretty modern loco. It's got an updated chassis, it's got all the sprung buffers, the DCC socket, everything like that so it's actually quite a decent model. Now the RRP for these at the moment, the super updated version, is £115 I believe, except you can buy, uh, I think it's the BR Black version, for £79 on Hattons, which is a much much better bargain. So as always if you like these, well you might not decide until a bit later on, but if you do like them there's a link in the description, feel free to click that and check them out and maybe pick yourself one up. Uh, for £79 I think this is a bargain, but let's uh, leave that up to you shall we, let's get this out and we'll see what it's like. Okay, the Backman 56XX. So let's start off then by having a quick look at the box. Now as you can see the image on the front there shows a BR lined green version. Now normally the images on the front of these old fashioned Backman boxes bear basically no resemblance to what's actually inside the box. But in this case it's quite close. It is a BR green version that we're going to be looking at today although I believe uh, mine is unlined. So uh, I guess it's closer than it has been in the past. So let me show you what's on the end of the box then. The product number for this one is 32-080 so that's what you need to look up if you want to see this particular version. It's a class 56XX, it's a tank, uh, 5601 is the running number, and oh it does say BR lined green, Lake Crest, oh right, okay, I didn't think this was lined, we'll have to take a look and see. Right, let's open this box then, uh, yeah, there's nothing to see on the back of the box in terms of loco history, so we'll get on this straight away and see what's inside. Well, I think a 56XX is what's inside, but we'll open it up and see for sure. So here we have the little card then with the image on the front, and if I show you that up close, there's the photograph, and if I turn it onto its back, there's a brief history of the class here. So uh, feel free to pause that and read it if you like, although I will be giving you a little bit of information about them in a second. And if I open this leaflet up, uh, we'll see the rest of the paperwork. Uh, let's take a look. So yeah, this is titled Class 56XX Locomotive. It's quite a basic exploded diagram, but it does show you the basics there. You can see the can motor and the DCC socket, or the decoder socket, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so yeah, quite a nice thing. Noticeably, it is not a split chassis model anymore, which is, which is great. I don't really like those particularly, so that's quite nice to see. But yeah, apart from that, let's get onto the loco and see what it's like. Now, there it is, and yeah, as I thought, this is not the BR lined green, and I wonder then if it's got the wrong box, let's have a look. Nope, the box says 5601, and the loco also says 5601, so in typical Backman style they've managed to cock that up, I reckon. Uh, I'm pretty sure this isn't lined, but uh, we'll take a look and see. Right. Yep, definitely no lining present on there, but uh, regardless of that, it is beautiful, don't you think? It really is lovely. As I say, the bodywork is quite an old tooling. Uh, it's been around for a long time. As I say, since the mainline era, in fact, I've got the mainline version here. It's not in very nice condition, but you can see that quite clearly it is the same model, or the same tooling at least. Different chassis though, of course. Uh, this version is very, very heavy, quite noticeably. There's a lot of weight to it. The running board is quite blatantly made of plastic, which is unusual for modern Bikeman locos. Most of, the, most of the modern ones do have a die-cast running board. This one's plastic, but the weight doesn't seem to have suffered because of that. Uh, there is a lot of weight, presumably because it's such a large chassis. But uh, yeah, it is a very, very nice looking thing. And of course, the 062 wheel configuration is very beautiful, I think, as well. I've always liked the N2s and the uh, the N7, I suppose. Uh, yeah, they're, they're very lovely things, aren't they? And I do really like the look of this. Quite an interesting shape as well, don't you think? So there we go. That's the locomotive. I did just forget to show you the detail pack or what looks like a detail pack. Right, so you've got uh, just these head code discs, I believe. I think that's what they are, just two of those. Uh, so everything else, yeah, the vacuum pipes and everything else seem to be fitted onto the model already. And uh, yeah, I think that's basically it in terms of detail. And yes, the brake rigging is fitted already as well. So, there you have it then, the 56XX. I'm going to give you a little bit of history now and then we'll get this up onto the white background and I will show you this up close. 
The GWR56XX or 5600 class was a collet design of tank engine which was first introduced to the railway in 1924. The class was intended to be a standard replacement for the various non-standard locomotives owned by the railway at the time, which were due to be withdrawn. In total, 200 of the 062s were built over a four-year period, and they were constructed using a range of standard parts, including Collett's standard number two boiler. The resulting class featured a capable two-cylinder design with high-capacity water tanks for longer journeys. The class survived into the final few years of steam in the UK until withdrawal began in fact in 1962. By 1965, all members of the class had been withdrawn, but nine were saved from scrap and are still preserved today. So there she is then, the 56XX up against the white background there, and yes, at first glance it is a very, very beautiful model. Now, you might think that Backman have been a little bit naughty here by selling on uh, a very old locomotive, a very old model from many years ago at uh, modern prices in modern packaging or whatnot. And with some models that is true, it doesn't work very well at all, but I think in this case they've gotten away with it quite nicely for two reasons, really. Well, first of all, the mainline models were always very, very good. Uh, the details was always miles ahead of other companies, Hornby for example at the time, and so they really weren't bad models in the first place. But second of all, because Backman have adapted the original model, they've changed it, augmented it, so that it complies with more modern standards. Now they've done that with the chassis, which we've already talked about briefly, and I will talk about that a little bit more later on. But they've also adapted the bodywork so that it's a little bit more modern, and the way they've done this is fascinating. So whereas on the old mainline version, the handrails and things were all part of the moulding, they've now been altered so that they are separately fitted which is great to see. The safety valve bonnet has also been completely reprofiled and although it is still made of plastic it now looks a lot more realistic and a lot less messy as the old version did. Uh, it's had a new chimney, the chimney appears to be now metal and separately fitted where the chassis block before used to be visible, there was this ugly chassis block visible just there, uh, they've now sort of recreated the lower part of the boiler uh, There, it isn't perfect, you can still see the big crack there but it's a damn sight better than it was before and they've also picked out some elements inside the cab unfortunately the cab detail isn't actually picked out completely but there is I think a handbrake there which has been picked out in the red which I suppose is quite nice also, the Loco has of course received a modern paint job, and despite the box claiming this being a lined model, obviously we, we haven't got the lining on this one, but the paintwork that is present on the model is nicely done, probably better than it would have been during the 70s or 80s or whatever, so you can see we've got the lake crest there, very nicely applied as it always is from Backman. You've also got the running number there just below the coal bunker, 5601, again really can't fault it, and even the whistles, although they're not separately fitted, which you would sort of expect them to be these days, uh, they are nicely painted and uh, they they are reasonably nicely moulded as well. And I suppose really the RRP does reflect that. £115 for a Backman price isn't too unreasonable. But of course there are some areas that do fall down very slightly. Obviously the coal here is a little bit unrealistic and as far as I know it's not removable, which is a little bit of a shame. As I've already said, the running board is also made of plastic, which is uh, you know, a little bit of a downgrade compared with some models. Uh, there's no interpretation of the valve gear between the frames or anything like that, even though you wouldn't get a great view. Although, incidentally, there is a view of the, the sort of cylinder heads, if you like. Uh, you can see where the cylinders would go, just below the smoke box there, so that's quite nice. The smoke box dart is partially separately fitted. You can see the front part of it is, but the back part is just part of the moulding, and actually that is original to the, uh, the mainline version. Uh, the original mainline mainline version didn't have any sprung buffers but I'm pleased to show you that this one does let me show you that uh, yep there we go they're sprung and as you can see we now get the vacuum pipes as well pre-fitted which is good to see the loco has now been retrofitted with NEM pockets as well so you can put your NEM couplings in which is a great feature and yeah generally I think it has scaled into modern times quite nicely it's certainly not the most detailed loco in the world with its plastic build and this sort of blank cab and that sort of thing however I think for the money and certainly for the 75 pounds that you can buy this from uh, from some of the retailers i don't think it's too bad at all is it uh, it all comes down really to the performance it's quite a heavy loco so it's got that going for it but uh, yeah we will see let's try her on the track and see how nicely she runs so there she is then down onto the track looking very very lovely and after some slow speed testing she's about to be coupling up to this rake of great western coaches. Now there's quite a lot, I've put six on there which is quite a challenge for a tiny tank engine like this and they're also quite old coaches with quite a lot of drag so it'll be interesting to see how they go. But first of all then let's talk about the quality of the mechanism. Now unlike the old mainline version, this version has been updated so that it works on pickups, it's no longer a split chassis model and it does have a can motor in there as well as a DCC 
socket as you know. However, the loco wheel set, as far as I can tell, does not run on a proper set of bearings. The, uh, the axles go straight onto the Mazak, which is not a feature I like very much at all. However, it does seem to work okay. And the rear wheel here, the rear axle, seems to be a little bit better than on the mainline ones. I very rarely get a derailment on this one, so it's quite nicely sprung and it does the trick very nicely. Now, there is a bit of a silly problem with this, though, with the couplings. Uh, so it causes derailments all the time. As you can see here, the couplings are actually attached to the ends of the chassis and because it's a relatively long chassis for a tank engine, when this goes around curves, those couplings have a tendency to swing out to the side. And what used to happen is when they would swing out, they would pull coaches or wagons or whatever off the track. And what manufacturers do to sort of alleviate that problem is they allow the couplings to pivot slightly. So when a coach pulls a coupling in one direction, the coupling will move in that direction rather than just staying rigid and pulling off the coach. Now on this one, as you can see, I've had to fit this large decoupling because when a coach goes around the corner, this is as far as it can move. It really is very, very rigid and it shouldn't be. It needs a lot more travel than that, uh, which did cause coaches to derail with the original coupling. That's why I've had to change it. Ideally, we'd have a really big range of movement like this so that you can run on tight radius curves. I think anything tighter than my third radius curves was causing this problem, which is very annoying and easily avoided. So that's a big thumbs down uh, in terms of that. But otherwise, it is a very good runner. Let's get this started to see how it goes. So let's turn up the power. As you can see, silently, she is creeping forwards there. Can you see that? And, yeah, incredibly smooth, incredibly slow. And, of course, it should be because there's no exterior linkage or anything like that. Or, well, or, you know, valve gear to see. So that's simplified the chassis quite a bit. But as you can see, that is a really, really beautiful slow speed. So despite the issues in terms of performance, the way she actually runs is absolutely astonishing. As you can see, that is so nice and smooth and a lot quieter and a lot smoother than the old mainline version, which wasn't bad in itself, and I'll get that running for you in just a second. Okay, let's get this girl to couple up to the coaches then and see if she can haul them. Okay, nice and gently does it, don't want to couple too quickly. There we go, right, that seems to be a successful coupling. And now that she has the larger decoupling fitted, I'm hoping she'll get around the track without any derailments, we'll see. Right, well as you can tell she's moving the coaches with some power, no problem at all there, which is very, very good. Now the theme on the layout today is 062 locomotive, so see which ones you can spot and see if you can spot an odd one out. But for now, here are the ones that are going to be running alongside the 56XX. So on the inside line, the very inside line, as promised, here is the old mainline version, and I call this one Chris. I forget now where the name Chris came from, but it's always been Chris for whatever reason. I've had this for many years. And she's got my shell train of shell tankers, which is quite nice to see. So, yep, that's another 062 for you. And then on the middle line, coming into shot now, hopefully, is one from the GNR, later to be the LNER. It is, of course, the N2. Here it comes now with my lovely LNER Clerestory coaches. Always really, really like that one, even though she stopped on the points. Okay, the slam hasn't worked. Sorry for everybody who's wearing headphones. Let's give her a push. And there we go. Yeah, not a fan of the express points. Anyway, enjoy the running session, folks. So, performance is easily the strong suit of this model. I'm not really qualified to say how accurate and realistic it is, uh, although I'm fairly sure it's better than the original mainline version, but certainly in terms of performance, I mean, look at that. That's six quite old, quite heavy coaches. Zero wheel slip at all. Really quite an impressive performance. And if we go up here, we'll see the source of all the noise. It is, of course, Chris, the old... 56xx uh, making quite the rumpus where is she she should turn up there we go still a fair runner actually although she's uh yes not in the best of shape body work wise <laughs> yeah really quite a mess that one i don't show her very often she's not too hideous though from a distance although it's certainly not as refined as the backman version <laughs> never mind though at least he still works Love the M2, especially in the GNR colours. But yeah, I mean, seriously, the way this one performs is is impressive. Uh, you don't get many locos that actually run as nicely as this. And with the chassis being hidden in such an old-fashioned body, you just don't expect that this loco is going to be a great runner or a great puller. But it is. And uh, it's, that is quite a pleasant surprise. So if you're one that takes great pleasure in you know, the good running qualities of a model, then it's definitely one for you. 
for the right price of course. I wouldn't necessarily recommend spending £115 on one, but I think 79 or less if you're lucky. Uh, yeah, is fair to say the least. Yep, there certainly is some power there, isn't there? And a bit of speed, if you you know if you want it out of her, although I'm not really doing that today, but yep, yeah, she has got a fair bit of speed to her as well, if that's what you prefer. So here are some of my ratings then on the lovely Backman 56XX. Detail was actually a lot better than I thought it was. It's obviously not quite up to modern standards because there is no valve gear, there's no painted cab, and a few other little bits that are sort of a bit plasticky and a little bit tacky. Particularly the handrails, a lot of those are a little bit chunkier than you'd expect them to be on modern logos. But it's certainly not bad, so I've given it a sort of average score of 3 out of 5. Power though, as you can see, she's hauling these six coaches at a slow speed with absolutely no problem at all, and I've no doubt that she could manage maybe seven, eight, or perhaps even nine coaches. So very, very good power for the size of the tank engine. The slow speed was also very, very good. As you could see, the slow crawl was very, very impressive, very nice and slow, and also very smooth and controllable, even at the very lowest speed. So that has to be a five out of five. Quality though leaves a little bit to be desired, you've got the issue with the couplings, you've got no proper bearings in the system, a lot of the loco is made of plastic when really for the price it ought to perhaps have been made of metal, even down to the whistles and that sort of thing, you know, if not even the running board. Uh, so yeah, it's okay, the quality is not bad, I think it's reasonably well built, but it's just not got quite as many features as modern locos might. Overall then, I think the value for £115 is okay, it's not the best value in the world, but it's certainly not the worst, so I've given it slightly above average on the score, 4 out of 5. Overall then, that is 7.63 out of 10, and into the ranking she goes, 33rd, just above the Hornby Grange and below the Backman A1. Let me know what you think, was I too harsh, or was I too generous, or was I spot on with the rankings? I'd be interested in what you think. Yeah, she's actually lovely, isn't she? Really, really pleased with this one. And I hope you liked it as well. Absolutely love it. XGWR, of course, so always going to be lovely. Okay, everybody, well, I hope you enjoyed that. That will just about do it for my review of the Backman 56XX. As I say, there's a link in the description if you'd like to pick one of these up cheap, and uh, I think overall, yes, I can recommend them. As long as you're not a rivet counter, I think you'll enjoy this very much. So there we go. That's the end of the review. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to leave the video a like or even a comment, that would be very much appreciated. But otherwise, for now, thank you for watching, and I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.